Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to another Red Pill Religion podcast, Red Pill Religion, where amongst other things, we are dedicated to the proposition that you don't have to be religious. That doesn't mean you get to lie about history, science, and religious people. Doesn't mean you can't get along with religious people either. So please support our work on redpillreligion.com, where you'll find our videos get archived every day or so. Um, and we also feature articles on there, and we plan on featuring more articles in the future and as we branch into uh, other topic areas such as men's issues and, 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 and stuff we're starting to see in geopolitics. Uh, but in any case, we can use your spiritual and financial support. Please see our PayPal, our Bitcoin, our maker support donation. Find us on maker support at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Gab AI on Red Pill Religion. We're no, we're harder to find now on places like Twitter since we were banned for hurting an atheist's feelings. So if you would tweet this out for people, uh, uh, anybody listening, just tweet it out with the appropriate hashtags and let people know we're still here. Would be appreciated. Okay, so uh, I tell you what. Uh, 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 tonight, oh, we're, we're joined by our old friend Deflating Atheism. Please say hi, Deflating. Hey, hey. Um, uh, deflating uh, is still one of my form fellow Catholics, so uh, we're the dirty papists in the room. Uh, White Engine uh, is not Catholic. He is a, 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 a... Secular theist. That's right. And both of these gentlemen have YouTube channels. Go subscribe to them. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're good channels um, with different material on them. Uh, and also joining us t tonight is Comrade Dimitri. Say hello. Uh, are we just going openly calling you Robert? Yep. You can call me Robert Freed by my name. Um, All right. Um, just remember, Dimitri, outing, you, yeah. outing yourself to the atheist mafia may get you targeted. Although I think we've got them weakened enough. It might be safe for people to come out of the closet now. Oh, Sorry. I've been targeted so badly. <laughs> have you? I have no concern. Uh, fair enough. Well, it was good to hear, hear you on here. And so... We have been going after, to be honest with you, I never thought Dark Matter 2525 was worth that much time. Um, although, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think, no, yeah, he probably is. Um, I, I've been very mean to him, and I don't see any reason to let up on being mean to him. As I've said many times, and I'm going to start this off again, I'm sick of Christians who are, or, or any religion, really, thinking that you've got to reason with a guy like this. You don't get it. He has been getting giving this kind of misinformation professionally for more than 10, 15 years, and he has no identity and no career prospects outside of hating on Christianity. He no, He's had ample opportunity over the years to learn and obviously would, in fact, has to know that much of the history he slings and much of the allegations he slings are simply false. Um, and so, the, the, you know, the word I have for people like this is cult leader and intellectual thug and bigot and bully. Hate monger is another appropriate phrase for him um, because he's easily debunked. A Muslim could debunk him. A Jew could debunk him. A Hindu could debunk him. Uh, an agnostic could debunk him. Uh, an honest-minded atheist like uh, like a Tim, Tim O'Neill who can't even stand us still would be able to debunk this guy. Um, and then you get, you know, he's responding to uh, the distributist here. And I, I don't know. I kind of get the idea. I hear through the grapevine, maybe Dave's starting to get the idea that you really can't reason with these people. These are narcissists and professionals. And the only way to deal with a narcissist is to set a firm line with them and not ever let them cross it. This uh, is a response to a response to a response to David Wood. Right, right, right. And and it, the thing is, is it's just filled with these... Uh, and, and, and it's so long. It's four hours of madness. We, we've had multiple members of, uh, of our community. By the way, join us in our Discord chat room. It's linked in the low bar down there. Anybody who wants to join our Discord chat room, we're, we're a friendly bunch and hard to ruffle. You know, So if you want to come in and troll us, uh, it won't work. Nothing really phases us. Um, but, I mean, if you want to come in and say hi, join our Discord chat room. It is open to the public pretty much 24-7. And uh, multiple members of the community, including Young Blood Ray, who wanted to be here, contributed to points he wanted addressed. Uh, Robert here has also uh, contributed time points he wants to address here. And I think the point of this exercise, for anybody listening, say, what's the point of this? Well, the point of this is not to persuade Dark Matter 2525 of anything because he's not persuadable. Mm -hmm. It is for his fans to see 
see how easily he is debunked and skewered and how fast he runs when someone does that. He's going to do his best to keep avoiding our existence. Yeah. He'd, rather, he'd rather he'd rather do a four hour response than debate the distributist. Right. He did, and he does a four hour response, which is unreasonable. Nobody's going to listen to that. And he knows it. And if you address a point, he said, like at the half hour mark, he'll come at you later and said, but wait a minute, I addressed that more over at the three hour mark or something like that. And he's like, dude, <laughs> what, what game well, are you his, playing, you know? Well, his, well, his dumbass fans uh, listen to, him, to it, obviously. They got no lies of their own, so... Okay. And Christians and, and again, other religions, too, just need to be able to listen to guys like this and start calling BS on them. Because, really, he, he thinks he wants to rule the world with him and his ideology. Yeah. And, 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 and beat up on everybody who doesn't think like him. And that's what he turns his fans into. I'm telling you right now, if you're a Dark Matter 2525, you're probably mm -hmm. uh, an unpleasant human being to be around. Not because you're so smart, but because you think you're smart and you're actually ignorant and obnoxious. Because listening to guys like this make you ignorant and obnoxious. Yeah. I don't, is, care, I don't care if telling is, you that hurts your feelings either. It's just the truth. And it's cartoons decrease your brain cells. Yeah. His fans are proof of that. This is, this is basically the dad lecture you never got because most of you never had daddies. Um, which is a difficult uh, psychological thing, but you can get help for it. Uh, 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 Learning to talk to older men who won't take your bullshit would be one part of making up for the fact that you didn't have fathers. By the way, most of you are listening, didn't have good relationships with your fathers or didn't have one at all. That's just a statistical reality of Dark Matter 2525's audience. Um, so in any case, why don't we go ahead and get started? So we got the first, uh, let's see, two hours, 11 minutes, 34 seconds is where I'm supposed to go, huh? Man, this right. is murder. Two hours, 11 minutes. Oh, everybody's going to have to... Yeah, you guys actually watched all this stuff. Well, but it, it's, it's gone in shifts. It's gone in shifts, right? <laughs> I mean, and, and everybody's listening, you know, it's been a team effort. <laughs> uh, I would never have done this. I mean, I would never have done this. Um, I would have made fun of this guy for 10 minutes and then moved on. Uh, hang on a second. I forgot to do something. It's like the guy who has to throw on the waders and go into the and go and just go into the sewage uh, waist deep, you know. It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it. I feel like I contracted a brain tumor watching his video. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and and uh, and Ray said that he felt a sharp pain in his skull. Yeah, he's like, is that he? Told, he asked me, is that normal? Oh, but I, I, I wait a minute. I forgot to ask Robert. What's your religious background? You're an agnostic, or uh, what was it again? Um, I have a really diverse religious background. I grew up evangelical. You have a what? A Cambodian American. Oh, crap, girl. I can't hear. Huh? You can't hear? All right. Robert. 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 I'm sorry, oh. I had a technical issue there. What did you say your religion is? Oh, um, I grew up as an evangelical. Oh, okay. Anyway. And um, you're kind of a nothing right now, or...? or? Yeah, I'm kind of like I'm kind of like Indian, you know. I'm like a secular. Secular. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, by the way, just so everybody knows, that's how it does actually roll around here. We don't really have religious checks at the door for anybody who wants to talk about this stuff. Uh, we really do have uh, people with Hindu backgrounds, people with Jewish backgrounds, people with other kind of pagan backgrounds in and out of here all the time, including officially on the team. So. Uh, oh, but if you're not, really, if you're not. If you're not anti-theist, you're part of the problem. Well, I tell you what, the, it, it, really, I mean, and friendly atheists <laughs> come in here all the time. Um, although, you know, some are only pretending to be uh, friendly, in my opinion, but um, not all of them. And, and you know, it's fine. It's the fact that this is an ideological cult movement. I'm repeating it for you again. It's not about accurate history. It's not about accurate science. It's not about anything but hating on religious people. Not just Christians, but especially Christians. They're wanting to turn on Muslims and Jews now which was predictable um and it's like yeah hindus you're next <laughs> i i you know really you got to give you've got to push back on these people everybody should put push back at atheists and say challenge them like really you think you know everything you have all the science okay so let's get to this first point uh 2 34 can i get there uh this will have to do all right now let me see if I can get make sure, everybody make sure the sound sounds all right. Yeah, let me know if it doesn't sound right. Right, yeah. Oh. The Christian abolitionist, you got yourself, you know, ten bucks, whatever. Uh, 
Yeah, um, there's there's uh, all these verses in your holy books that promote slavery and and uh, you know since oh, slavery you, you know went on and on all throughout human history and your holy books contributed to that. But yeah, in the eleventh hour um, towards modernity, there are some Christians who who fought against that. Yeah, good on them. I'm sorry I didn't mention them. I you know I'm too busy complaining about slavery and. And and the, how your you fucking religion perpetuated it, but you know, God forbid, I don't mention the fact that there were people who believed in Christianity when pretty much everyone else believed in Christianity who fought against it. Okay, I'm sorry. Abolitionists for the betterment of society. We where uh, where were the atheists who were crusading against uh, slavery? That's what I'm wondering. Well, and what years. and what what and what excuse did atheist slave owners have? Um, why are we not acknowledging the fact that the biggest slave holding state in the world is 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 officially atheist Chinese China? Mm -hmm. why are say, we, you know, um, and why why are we not mentioning the fact that there's a long history of uh, uh, slavery and or things that amount to slavery all over secular uh, officially rigidly secular states? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, why are we supposed to believe you're a moral authority on on slavery at all? When when your fellow when your co-religionists and by the way, stop lying and saying your atheism is not a religion. Yes, it is. We don't have to believe you and don't appeal to the dictionary like a little bitch. It's a religion for you. You believe a bunch of shit that's easily disproved, and you keep putting it out over and over again and thinking you have a license to abuse religious people. Oh, here's a point. Here's, here's a point I wanted. Here's we'll a point I wanted back. to make. Here's a point okay. I wanted to make. Uh, how come they ne how come they never bitch about the founding fathers owning slaves? I don't yeah, know. You would think they would. <laughs> Actually, they do. No, I'm sorry, you're mistaken. They often do. I don't know if Dark Matter ha here has done so, but I would imagine he has because he trades in a lot of the, uh, the the other fake phony history. I mean, it is true that, that that some of the founders had slaves, not all of them, and it was a bitter, contentious issue between them. Um, and the only thing that's wrong about that is, you know, fine, we can admit that, that, that those who held slaves were wrong or hypocritical, but that's just part of history. You can't keep doing that to people forever. Yeah, well, the, they'll elevate Thomas Jefferson when they want to put some uh, apocryphal quote in, in his uh, mouth or, or take something he said way out of context in a way that wouldn't seem to... Uh, indict christianity they're all for thomas jefferson then certainly oh oh they also like to quote mark twain even though he was as racist as anybody is in his time i want i want to see you know atheists have been going as this popular uh movement ideology ever since the you know mid 2000s when guys like this appeared as part of the big effort to take the internet for rationalism which was really just a a, a pogrom against christians um this is just what happened which this guy was part of that wave um you know whatever why don't we move I, on i have to say max i just want to say i mean i i'm, I'm an old timer too and i was on the internet i was on usenet uh, uh back in the 90s and i saw like all oh, the yeah. they were the same guys they had the same self-congratulatory yeah. signatures they're all like kind of big upping themselves on their yeah. own you know, atheist put downs and they were doing this in in 1996 so the 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 culture of online atheists hasn't really changed in 20 years it's just found a bigger audience well and huh. it's become more vicious because yeah. even back in those days because i was back in the usenet days too so huh. rob and i are old men we were on the internet before you knew what it was kids yeah. um back, and back when back when life made back huh? when life made sense right back when life made sense in the good old days no, I mean, I mean, there were a lot of problems back then too, but whoo, um, look at today, especially on this. I mean, the internet atheists, it used to be that um, although some of them were obviously completely psychotic, most of them you could joke with, most of them you could laugh with, um, most of you them, you know, uh, would at least try to get along with religious people, you know, unless they were just in some, I mean, it felt like something you knew they were going to grow out of in many cases, unless there was a genuine psychosis there. Um, and those were all, they, they were all basically Aspie nerds. Mm. Um, and they were all, they, you know, that's what predominated on the early internet culture in the nineties was, was Aspie nerd types and chronic ADHD guys like me and, 
you know, uh, uh, basically the guys with the beards and the pot bellies and um, chugging the Mountain Dew were the original internet culture. Um, so it, it isn't like that anymore, but these guys have popularized that, that spurgish atheism and this ludicrous militant ideology that goes with it. I mean, what gets me is like the early uh, spurgish atheists in the, on the internet um, even even the ones who were obnoxious about their atheism had a real uh, dedication to getting things factually correct. Um, so I always I always knew with that old atheist crowd they were spurgs, and uh, they were they were very zealous about making sure history and data and that were right. Um, and uh, I know that kind of atheist. If I give him enough data, he's going to realize he's been fed a b bunch of propaganda. But uh, it's moved on and popularized in the popular culture. It's not just Spurgs anymore. I mean, it's kids who are bright enough and to know better, but they just believe this false history that these guys began propagating professionally. Anyway, the um, back back to the slave part. The um, what they used to just the white man used to justify slavery. You know, Christians obviously didn't invent it. The Africans were enslaving each other before the white man even mm -hmm. came there. But they all the tribal chieftains offered the low and down them on them to the white man. And of course, the white man had most of them being Christians had to justify this, like uh, the curse of Canaan, like a uh, Noah's reaction to his um, to his son castrating him was uh, to curse Canaan, Ham's son. A uh, servant of servants shall he be. This passage was wrongly used in past centuries to justify the enslavement of African people, resulting in grievous abuse, injustice, and humanity to people. Like his curse on Canaan, which focuses on his being a servant, anticipates the, anticipated the judgment that would later befall the Canaanites. Like these guys didn't even know their own Bibles because Canaanites obviously were not black. But yeah. um, well, they I, certainly I, weren't white. They that. weren't. They, they weren't white either, obviously. But yeah, it, that just shows how illegitimate it was to use this text to justify enslaving the African people in the first place. Yeah, and above and beyond that, Christians have a justification for for condemning uh, uh, slavery. Oh, I, and 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 the truth is, I mean, obviously, I'm not a historical scholar, but but uh, indentured servitude was an unfortunate fact of life. In ancient, you know, Israel. Uh, no, but no, but they love to use their comfortable 21st century surroundings to judge ancient cultures. Yeah, yeah, but it also it also says the golden rule. You know, they ask Jesus, "What what is uh, the one rule above all others?" It says, "You know, treat love others as as you know you want to as you know, they you, uh, treat others as you want to be treated." Yes, and, and then so, slave day, and sla and that gives us a justification for for uh, a condemning cruel behavior of of indentured servants. Yeah, and the slaves obey your masters. Paul was encouraging the Christians, like, uh, you know, would it be if you're living in the Roman Empire where slavery was, uh, in was pretty much a actual pretty part much of part of it. It was yeah. it built slavery built Rome. Basically, yep, it did so. What he would, if you were living back? What if you were living back then? Would it be better to bite your tongue and hope life is better than this, or to complain and get hit so hard you'll never complain again? Let me give. Let me make a real good important point about this. At this period in the Roman Empire, um, when when and when Christianity is a tiny, tiny, tiny little religion, what you'd call a cult. And no, not all religions are cults, but it would it would be properly called a cult. It, at this point in time when Paul is writing, um, uh, uh, they were not the majority of religion. They could not uh, uh, boss things. Uh, you know, they couldn't just demand the laws be changed. Um, and uh, a majority of the population in the city of Rome probably would have been a slaves at that time. Like literally more slaves than slave owners, which is actually what's typical in major slave owning uh, countries, which, which means he was giving advice to the people at the time. Um, had he told them to revolt, they'd have all just been killed. Mm. Um, and, and the Christian ethic is more, you know, you, you become a Christian no matter what your station in life is. Whether you're a prisoner right now on death row, you can become a Christian. You know, I mean, uh, whatever your station in life and, and God isn't promising to fix your station in life. Uh, in fact, part of the Christian message is, you know, although they distort this, 
um, you know, is to accept your lot in life to some extent. Although if you get into other parts of the Bible, I mean, Christians can fight. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, the part of the Christian message is, Hey, you know, you're, you're not going to go seeking glory of the world. You were born a slave and odds are you might die one. Um, but that doesn't keep you away from Christ and you don't, and actually slavery, it was, as it was practiced in Rome at that time, since the, the I mean, it was like so embedded in the, in the culture, um, that many slaves were like, they would rather be slaves than free because they saw the free men who were poor um, as having worse lives than them in many cases. Um, they, 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 you know, and let's say you're, you're, you're 70 years old um, and you suddenly want your slavery. No, you don't. You've been with this family your whole life. Um, they're taking care of you as you're aging. Why would you want your slave status gone? Um, uh, slaves had rights. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, an owner could do a lot to them, but as a practical matter, uh, you didn't regularly mistreat Roman slaves. Um, you would make an example of one once in a while, but, um, you know, slaves would run libraries and would, you know, uh, you know, be your household servant and, and, and might be scholars. Uh, in fact, if I recall correctly, I don't remember, Aristotle was the teacher of, uh, of Alexander the Great. And I think for a time he was Aristotle's slave. I mean, our slave, uh, Alexander's slave. Um, because, like, if I may be wrong on that, but you had similar relationships. Like, you might own a very valuable slave that you treated, but that would get treated better. I think he was more like, a, I think he was more like an advisor to him. Well, um, no, he was a teacher to him. Um, but, yeah, I'm, ta I'm talking about the slave situation. I, oh, well, I, no, I, I think he, I think he was owned for a time. I may just be misremembering this. He certainly did work. Uh, you did have other relationships like that. Like you might buy a trained philosopher and you and to teach your kids and to teach you. You like, might like every like everybody yeah. knows Aristotle tutored Alexander. Yeah. Okay. So I may have, I may be thinking of somebody else who had a slave relationship like that. But I mean, you really might buy a, 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 a philosopher as a slave and give him his own house and his own run of things and let him do whatever he wants is on his own time as long as he shows up for class. All I right. Mean, let's get going. Okay. My point is, slavery is a complicated thing. You can't reduce it like they do this here when you're talking about slavery in the Bible. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see. We're going from. 232 no 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 226 we just dude i don't know why you do this but we already did that no we did 211 it's right. 226 it's 226 10 to 226 33 226 10 all right i have to get it as close as i can so that will have to do it who are the type of person that imagines things as being an all or none type of scenario, totally good or totally evil or totally helpful or totally harmful. Hmm. And I'm not that way. You know, you ironically, not that I'm way the either. one who's being nuanced Bullshit. here and you're the one who's being the fucking idiot. Dave's thing. not like that at all. If it was just static since 180. The one that's based on luck, not mine. It's true that the initial viability of the printing press was due to the demand for Bibles, as such a thing would be in high demand during the brutal reign of the church. But that's a mere credit of logistics and not a matter of credit for anything philosophical or scientific. Where am I supposed to stop this engine? This 33. Explorers were leaving Europe on voyages all over the world for the first time, leading to many discussions cultures and ideas. And when they return, we're already right past that. I'm sorry, I apologize, but we're at two twenty seven oh eight right now. Um, so uh, his basically, his, basically, he called the distributors a fucking idiot. Uh, maybe I should just go ahead and get that out then. Uh, two twenty. I must have hit it wrong. I apologize. Um, most of his history there that he was just babbling around is, is really warped and distorted kids. And, uh, you should consult us for some more reliable sources. This guy literally uses false history just so you all know. Yeah. Uh, well, well, if his, if his whole, if he's bragging about the point that, that he has a nuanced view, uh, would he admit that, that religion is not an unalloyed, uh, unalloyed evil? I mean, can he say there's good things about it too? Would he be willing to make that concession? That's what uh, I was going to say. <laughs> 
I was gonna say that um that you know he he he's, he claims to be um to not have this absolute absolutist view on you know religion, but then he's using things like you know during the brutal reign of the church. Brutal reign of the church, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the the medieval Gestapo. Yes. He knows nothing about the medieval church. Okay, I'm sorry. One more time. I'm supposed to go 226, 12 to what? To uh, 33, but we already did that, didn't we? Yeah, we, we could just we could just like Russian roulette this, you know, just go randomly through the video and just, just pick out the <laughs> All right, uh, next, one, next one's 230, 13 to 230, 50. All right, 230, 13. It is true we could pick random segments and just just because I mean this this ramble is just ludicrous. Yeah. Okay, but by the way, Max, is there a video for this? Is, huh? there, is there anything we could be watching? I'm oh I'm sorry I I'm not showing it to you. No, man, what a crappy crappy stream I'm running tonight. I apologize, everybody. Here, this is what we're actually looking at now. Tell me again, what's the, our starting point? Uh, two thirty thirteen to two thirty fifty. I'll get as close to that as I can to 2.30.50. All, All right, here we go. All discoveries from China and Africa, and I mean, there's no evidence for any of this. What, 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 what is this? SJW history? What, what are you talking about? You are SJW. Uh, of course, this is just out. more red meat for his audience. You know, his, This guy's his, old school they, SJW they who that. got kicked out. No, let him go. Let him go. W, you know, so that they can know that this is they're supposed to disagree with this they're supposed to hate this he he doesn't he's this isn't a refutation you know just saying something is sjw history you know to miss it an age of exploration that's that's fucking ridiculous and and you know and he says that th that i'm painful <sighs> astounding you are painful you lie sir and you lie for a living. I don't know what else to say. Who else has who else has something to say? Look at the I talk on the kettle like, black. I feel like dark matter is in his fat Elvis period. You know, he just doesn't give a shit anymore. He just stumbles up on stage and just mumbles. And you know, he's he's. I I tell you, I could do what he does. Is the funny thing. I mean, yeah. I, just have to, I just have to turn history completely upside down and mis you know forget two thirds of what I know. And most of the actual science that I know, and 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 I know mean creationism. Sorry, uh, uh, I don't even know what to say to any of that. Yeah, who else has something? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, speaking of SJWs, he's responsible for shives. He's oh. responsible. He is. Shives. Well, one of the he's things you're going to notice is that all atheists are Steve Shives. Let me note this about uh, some so-called fakes, men's rights advocates like Elam and, and Strawn, uh, 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 are Steve Shives. Um, uh, uh, Sargon of Akkad is Steve Shives. They all turn into Steve Shives because anytime someone starts calling them on their bullshit, they either try to hurt and destroy them, the person who called bullshit on them, or they run like hell and want you to go away. Unfortunately, we won't be going away because at this point we're serious. Uh, you're yeah. just the worst people on the internet. <laughs> you're horrible, and somebody needs to tell you you're horrible. Um, and your fans, God, people, if you're this guy's fans, you're you, you are being brainwashed by a zealot and a and a cultist who's trying to make money selling you bullshit. Um, anyway, um, should we move on to the next segment? And he has yep. made money. He's made he's made a, a a fair decent amount of coin doing this. Yeah, I I, I kind of want to see him having to get a job that involves wearing a name tag. Yeah. Um, if he's a typical atheist, he'll wind up suiciding, or he'll find God and then have to run from his fellow atheists. Who oh yeah, and in his a uh, in his video where he thought he debunked the fine tuning argument, he needed an excuse to show off his car. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I saw what that. An elitist. Yeah. <laughs> what an elitist. <laughs> Yeah, no lie. Um, selling people easily debunked fraudulent data. No, but e there's even atheists out there that found his video, sh his argument shit. Hmm. That's because all atheist arguments are shit, which is what most atheists are start who have a brain left in their head are starting to realize. Um, literally, atheism is a big nothing. Yeah. Uh, 
lead you nowhere. In fact, it leads you into a reductionist worldview that destroys your ability to think and destroys your ability to get along with your fellow rational human beings. It's just but, 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 but my logic, my reason, my science. Like, yeah, they, yeah, well, they are. Oh, dark ages. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, you become an atheist and instantly you're a science expert and instantly you're a psychology expert empowered to make diagnoses from thousands of miles away based on nothing but uh, someone said something you didn't agree with. Uh, it's an amazing set of powers they give you when you join atheism. You're like, I, I like, I love it when they say the only reason you believe in God is because you have been brainwashed. I'm like, okay, show me the clinical literature on brainwashing, and please provide your dossier of my life that would enable <laughs> you to make. Uh, uh, if you apparently know my entire biography, uh, you you're able to say why I believe what I believe, and so uh, please produce all this evidence or, or shut up. Yes. A standard line that you should always use on these guys uh, um, that will really shut them up is this. Please re present the peer-reviewed papers which establish what you just said yes. um, uh, so that I may review them. Um, so, for example, please review, you know, please present the peer-reviewed studies that show the existence of brainwashing, um, that show and what it exactly is. And then show that, that demonstrate that religion is brainwashing, that my religion is brainwashing. Yes. We present the peer reviewed studies and prove, you know, anything else you ever say. Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't make a claim without scientific evidence, would you? Right. All right. If I'm brainwashed, sir, if everybody here is brainwashed, including the non Christians who just can tell you're full of shit, um, who's not brainwashed? Only atheists aren't brainwashed. I'm just wondering. Every, uh, everybody before Voltaire was brainwashed. Yeah. 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 And suddenly you go clear. Like in Scientology, <laughs> you go clear and become an atheist. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, uh, well, well, yeah <laughs> Voltaire what, was, not, was not an atheist, but he was the first. He, he was one of the first to bash religion and get away with it. Well, yeah. that, that's the big thing. I know we're getting off topic here about like Stephen Pinker's book is that he, he tries to. Well, he wrote two books on the subject. Wrong! But, but he, he like tries to claim the entire enlightenment for atheism when very few of those uh, enlightenment figures were actually atheists. Yes, and the ones also, the ones that were, were atheists. the ones that were atheists were crazy. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, yeah, the ones that were um, inspired the um, terror, the state terroristic French Revolution. Yep. Yes. Which which attempted to um, de-Christianize itself. <laughs> Let, let me say again what I've said before, and he's one of our targets, by the way, long term. We ain't kidding when we say we're out to go all the way up to the up to the top of the atheist food chain to ever to get to discredit every one of these people and because yes. they're all frauds. And it turns out there's a there's a class of so-called so respectable intellectuals who are part of this movement, some of whom were useful idiots like Daniel Dennett and maybe now Steven Pinker um, can be shown in his books to indul indul indulge in absolute pseudo scholarship, absolutely irresponsible pseudo history. Um, he's a fraud. Um, he may he may know new linguistics good, but he's very 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 much an ideologue, a social justice ideologue who decided social justice went a little too far for him, and now he's trying to play one of the good guys. Um, um, it's not going to work. It's not going to work on Sam Harris either. These people were part of setting this all up in the first place and putting this demonstrable hate propaganda into the culture. Bill Maher's another one. Penn Jillette, that asshole, still another. Hmm. Um, oh, this is a horrible cult movement, and we need all these people looking for new jobs. I don't know, guys. We got to move on. All right. What's the next step? The 232.25 to 234.12. 232.25? Yeah, to 234.12. I can't. 232. Oh, dang it. 232. Uh, it's really hard to get to these with this huge video. I should chop it up somehow. I'm going to just have to start at 20 and, and take it to where? Uh, to 30, to, to, to 3412. All right, here we go. I said earlier about this guy being sheltered, right? Most of modern art is incredibly beautiful, and a lot of it 
if not most of it, is also based in realism. And the, even the artwork that is stylistic is also beautiful and has very discernible features that, that aren't just, you know, abstract. But he's ignorant of that. He, he is cherry picking. You know, he's pointing to uh, some red splotch of period blood, as he calls it. Like, um, is there any famous artwork that we can think of that's a red splotch of period blood? Is there, is there, is where, what is the, um, the last supper of, of period blood? Like there's, there isn't one. We don't, we don't revere those works of art in that way. That's a very niche thing. That's not, that's not the norm. Okay. Good Lord. Uh, Yes. There's some elitism going on there. Yes. There's some insufferable douchebags in the art world. We get that. Okay. But you you can't take them and say that this is what you are. This is what um, has become of of the art world. Who made There's you? There's much more to the art world today. <laughs> he speaks for the art this world. This guy is ignorant he about. It. Maybe he's like world. me, and he did study the Hellenistic period and Baroque, and maybe he knows all about the Renaissance and uh, you know the Impressionists later on and Dadaism, and maybe he'd studied all that. You know, I studied art history. I know all about the history. Okay. But I also keep in touch yeah. with what's going on today. And there's brilliant artists. There's famous artists. What's actually going on today is that atheist artists are producing crap no one likes and just ever greater levels of sexual uh, extremes. Uh, he, th- he thinks his, he thinks his uh, low-rent South Park wannabe cartoons are uh, art. <laughs> I actually appreciate South Park, um, but uh, I, I mean, I know what you mean. Um, I said low rent South Park wannabe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got you. Yeah. South Park. <laughs> Hell, even, even Veggie Tales has better art than that. Well, and I've always, I've always said this about dark matters, so called artwork. North Korean propaganda that's anti Christian, and it exists, I've seen it, is way better in terms of criticism than anything that dark matters ever come up with against Christianity. Mm. I'm going to say straight up, atheists tend to be terrible artists. You will occasionally find one good, but they usually trend toward the negative or just to the incoherent or the rage filled or, or the extremely provocative. They, they gravitate toward huge extremes because of course, atheism is a reductionist worldview and that's the, what it starts doing to your brain and everything you look at. It's why atheists can rarely create anything. They can only criticize others and they never take responsibility for themselves, um, what they believe and they never res- take any responsibility for what any of their fellow atheists do or say, or they rarely do. Um, and they don't feel obliged to correct lies they've told in the past. I mean, it's like, eh, uh, who else wants like, to say? And, and, he, and he talks about the theft of our values. Like, what who's values? You, you, you just, you, anti-theists that? just le- just leech off of our values. Mm, yeah. yeah. Like, like, they, like, they like, put, like, they put, they put their own spin on it, but they still, it doesn't make them any less leech. Gay rights only happened in, in, in Christian countries, and it happened by appealing to Christians on their own values of tolerance and, and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and by the way, have you noticed that, uh, that now gay men are, especially gay men are not no longer one of the favored classes, the favored oppressed. They, they have to go to the back of the line for the LGBTQ plus feminists. I love um, it when social justice warriors turn against each other. <laughs> they always do. They always do. Yes. They always do. Yeah. They oh, always yeah. Turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tecton has better animation than he does. Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I like Tecton, and his, his animation is not the best, but it's, it's fun. And it's he has still no better than Still better no, than fucking Dark Matters. I know. He has no pretensions either. I mean, this guy probably thinks he's an artistic genius of some sort, and that he's very daring. No, you're just another reductionist militant, um, you know, black and white thinking, hate mongering, professional atheist. Uh, <laughs> you don't have anything uh, positive to add to anybody's life in any way. Oh, that jackass ruined the Bible for so many impressionable people. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, OK, so what's the next time point? Uh, 234, 19 to 234, 50. 19 let me find the 234 19 
Are we in the sections that you were picking for us, Robert? Uh, no, not yet. No, this is the last of Ray's. I'm going to have to go all the way back to 234.04, and then where am I ending at? 234.19 to 234.50. Touch with what's going on today. And there's brilliant artists. There's famous artists. There's artists who are millionaires who make beautiful artwork. <laughs> but this is about that. He knows about the period blood because he watches the red meat anti-SJW videos on YouTube that focus on the period blood. So that occupies a big space in his life because he he exposes himself to garbage. So he uh, kind of extrapolates that upon the rest of the world. And he thinks that the rest of the world is filled with garbage when it's not. Expose yourself to beauty. You know, <laughs> go out there and look for it. Stop looking for garbage. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, have you looked at your own artwork, sir? Is there any? <laughs> there? Uh, I I love the projection here, though. Oh my God, Dave! You know, if the, I don't know if he's listening, but Dave, he's totally got you pegged, man. He totally understands your personality and everything you're all about. Isn't he a genius? Oh my. <laughs> Well, well, uh, hold on, hold on. on the on the thing about atheist artists, there was Picasso. Uh, yeah, and you know he got increasing. He's also overrated. He got increasingly incoherent and uninteresting to a whole lot of people. Atheists oh, yeah. are pretentious because uh, he's the best they can produce most of the time. Um, cubism and Dadaism and all that is interesting, but it's all ultimately atheist art. You'll notice, and it's all. All winds up being uh, uh, reductionist materialism and um, trying to be, uh, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, sacrilegious, trying to be completely irreverent and have no respect for things or to savage things. And pretty soon there's nothing left to, left to savage. So I, like to, I like to see this. I like huh? to see this moron come up with something be better than the Sistine Chapel and the Statue of David. Yeah, well, we don't even need to talk about art. It's just his whole ethos of don't expose yourself to garbage just goes out to an audience who who, his who, who forego his actual philosophy and read like Richard Dawkins instead or forgo actual history and watch like Zeitgeist because it just, you know, uh, uh, panders to their preconceptions. These people seek out garbage. His cartoons are garbage. Yes. Zeitgeist is at least somewhat interesting, isn't it? Or is it complete total garbage? Complete, it's yeah. complete total garbage. Horrible, horrible. Uh, uh, oh, da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code was interesting. interesting. Okay, now I've started to hear about. Okay, I'm starting to remember about. Yeah, there's a lot of a uh, of, of very dodgy history in that movie. Um, I hadn't realized. Somebody recently talked told me to watch it. Um, and. Literally, I literally everything. Now I recognize hearing all about it. Um, we can watch it sometime. Da Vinci right? Code is. We should probably try da Vinci doing Code a deconstruction is, of it. Twisted, but it's still interesting. We yeah. should try doing a deconstruction of it. I think we should also start deconstructing non atheists who are more agnostic, but who still say dumb things all the time about religion and its history because it's obvious they were brainwashed and don't know it. Um, uh, uh, but let's see what we see. By the uh, way, I, I just want to say, uh, uh, more in line with the with the don't expose yourself to garbage. A point I always make with with Max and and because we we respond to guys like Logic, and Godless Engineer. I make this complaint to Max and to Christopher Lansdowne is that these guys are so narcotically boring that watching their videos for me personally is torturous. And no, so this oh, is hard. I just oh yeah, hard. I'm uh. Missing the Mars uh, parody of of uh, Logic really hurt his feelings, and incidentally, his fans. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Logic yeah. gave a completely serious twenty minute response to to uh, missing the mark spoof of him. So this guy is like full Asperger's. He doesn't understand. You don't take a spoof and make a serious response to it, and it's so boring. And like, I don't think any of his fans. I don't think any of their fans actually find Logic. Or, or, or Godless Engineer, or any of those guys, actually interesting and funny, but uh, they tell them what they want to hear. So, I, I mean, it's it's sad that these people subject themselves to something that is so uh, boring and just so painful in every way 
just to just to get their own preconceptions uh, echoed back to them. So I feel you know, better about themselves than they have a right to feel. Yeah, well, some of these uh, some, out garbage. Uh, some of them have are uh, well spoken and have an air of being intelligent while actually being incompetent jackasses. Yep, and that, and that's probably one of the most obnoxious. I mean, at this point, actually, you can tell if somebody introduces himself as an atheist, he will think he is a science expert and will be a science illiterate. It is yes. predictable more than nine times out of ten by my counting, and I encounter a lot of these people. It's pathetic how bad they are at science, and they are arrogant in their ignorance. Uh, by, oh, by I mean way. about contemporary science. I'm not talking about the creationist debates or any of that crap, but I mean contemporary evolutionary biology they get wrong, contemporary <laughs> cosmology they get wrong, quantum physics they get wrong. Oh, they just get it wrong everywhere. It's ridiculous. Because they're 10, 15, 20, even 100 years out of date in many cases. Yes. By the way, if an atheist ever says, I believe in science, you can tell right there he knows nothing about science. Because science is not right. a doctrine to be believed. It is a method. In fact, he has declared science his God. Yes. And he will deny that he's done such a thing, but he will make it clear that he does indeed worship science and he implicitly trusts science, which also means that whatever scientists tell him, he will simply accept as, as long as it makes sense to him at the moment. Because he just unquestionably obeys the scientists or the people who pose as the science experts. He just believes them. It really does make them very gullible and manipulable, which is another area where atheists always project. They talked about religious people being gullible. Oh my God, you yes. can get an atheist to do almost anything if you tell him there's a scientific study saying that it makes sense. Yes. And it doesn't really have to be scientific, but it's a peer reviewed paper and it's in the publications I read. So it's oh, yeah. science. Apparently, we have no free will, and next they're going to start arguing that color is an illusion. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. All right. So where should we go? But, but man, his, his psychoanalysis powers are just amazing. He just completely got Dave 100% correct in all ways. Wasn't it genius? Well, I'm being listen, sarcastic. I'm being sarcastic. I, for uh, all the good words yeah. they have about the hard sciences, uh, atheists really seem to traffic in the bullshit soft sciences, the bullshit uh, psychology and bullshit, bullshit physiology. Because they they make very few claims actually dealing with the hard sciences, but they they will project about your about your uh, sociology and your psychology all day long. They're full of those kinds of claims, and they never have any evidence for any of it. I'm gonna repeat. Oh yeah, um, go ahead. Dark, dark matter's most sophisticated concept of God is a white old man with robes. Yeah, well, then they all go back to the man in the sky. You know, it's it's such an embarrassment. And if he wants to, if he's so, if he's got, if he's so well versed in his Bible, then why are all the characters white? Uh, let me ask, we'll go back to one last thing. The irony of this man calling other people SJW is ridiculous. Everything he puts out is Marxist propaganda that the SJWs also put out. Everything he says about religion, um, any religion, uh, the Christian religion or other religion, is documentable, is the same as SJW propaganda. This man is an SJW propagandist who uh, got kicked out of SJWism um, but for being politically impure, which is because that's what Marxists do. They always purge the impure thinkers, and they're always ideological atheists who believe all this and, crap that comes out of this man's mouth. And he brought shies out of obscurity. He brought shives out of obscurity. Woo! And created the anti shive Shar Sargon, who is in the end uh, no different. Um, okay. Um, uh, 245 to 24602. 245, exactly. Yeah. 24500. Oh, oh. Man. All right, we'll have to do there. 24500 oh, oh, to 245 to what? 4602. Okay. There was beautiful architecture. Um, that's not relevant to my point about referencing the real world. Now, the way you can recognize that I'm actually making a legitimate point and they're not huh. is because their standard is largely subjective and that standard is beauty. What? You know, compare um, a flying buttress to a Corinthian column, you know, which is more beautiful. It, well, that's largely subjective. That's in the eye of the, of the beholder, right? But 
if you apply a standard like what I have, like which is more realistic, that has an objective, that has a more objective answer. So if we compare uh, a medieval art to uh, an ancient Greek art, we can compare them and, say, and, and see that there's a difference in realism there. It's not like taking you know, a Corinthian column and a, a flying buttress and saying, which is more beautiful? You see, their standard is subjective. My standard is objective. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> making up. <laughs> They're being self-congratulatory hacks. Comparison. Or my... I... What? Look, at the pot, that... look at the pot calling the kettle black. The, that makes no sense if realism is is your is your only uh is your only criteria uh any photograph would be better than every painting i mean that that doesn't make any sense at all well, you can't here's the thing out, you can't factor out the subjective out of out of art appreciation well and here's the thing too is that i don't grant his premise that allegedly more realistic art equates um better science or you know a more scientific worldview. You could look at um, art from Japan from about the, uh, let's see, I'm looking around. Um, you could look at Japanese art from the Suka period to the Maromuchi, Maromachi period, and it's very um, naturalistic and realistic, you know, at least in terms of their paintings, but uh, Japan wasn't, you know, really scientific at that time. Mm. Yeah, well, does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, oh, um, I, uh, I think there was surrounding context to uh, to what he was saying that that I kind of missed out on. But yeah, let me point out something uh, uh, that that is important for his audience to understand. If uh, because I keep I, I'm tired of hearing this BS lie that you know Christianity doesn't tolerate other religions. BS, BS, BS. The best Japanese art routinely comes from highly religious periods almost invariably true for china as well um uh, true for europe as well look at what atheist art brings us it basically brings us the soviet bloc it basically yeah. brings it brings us maoist china it basically brings us the soulless ugly art of most atheists Ooh. whether they be sjw's or anarchist libertarians it's ugly most oh yeah, you, you ever notice the Soviet architecture in comparison to the religious ones in Russia? For Even yeah. It's yeah. because it's very photographic, um, half the time it's still you can see they it, it's very there's still a plasticness to it. Even to like, um, you know, like a, a very spiritually devoid. I love Fallout Four, but you can, there's a spiritual void there in that mo in that in the way they did that, and you can tell because. Everybody in Silicon Valley now is anti-religion, and you can it just sucks the life out of things in ways that's startling to see. Um, and, and all religions are more interesting than what atheists produce. That's my point. All religions are more interesting than what atheists produce artistically. I'll oh, tuck, another I'll, I'll thing. Tuck up the best Hindu art against the best atheist art. The Hindu will win hands down. The Shintoists will win hands down. The Buddhists will win hands down. Uh, and the Catholics will really kick your ass. <laughs> oh yeah, this this, 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 uh, this one guy in the chat, the JMD Apologetics One Hundred Ones, asked if he can join the stream. Uh, uh, sure, why not? Um, this is this is this is almost becoming entertaining. Uh, send him the, the link. You have it. Um, I, I I I don't unless he if he's not in Discord, I can't get it. To, I don't know how to get to him. We'll have to get you another time. Um, and no, you can join us thing, for part, you, can, you can join us in part four. Yeah, you can join us in part four, but you gotta get on Discord, please, people. It's the fastest way to get a hold of. If you want to be involved in our streams, get on freaking Discord. We're in there every day, and all you have to do is pop in and say, "I'd like to do a stream tonight." And if we're not busy, we'll bring you on. Um, so that actually, that's the rule. You want to you want to be a regular on our streams? Get on freaking Discord and check in once in a while. Um, uh, links in the low bar. Where where should we start on the next section? I wanted to say uh, something real quick. Um, oh, go ahead. I want to say something. Sorry. Um, another thing too is that um, even though Roman art was really realistic, um, despite the fact that you know Roman art was really realistic, they actually um forbid human ana um dissection when they invaded ancient um Greece in the year one hundred and fifty um, BC. Oh yeah. He'll, he'll so, the, um, that's the next point. 
You know what we should do is we should actually have a stream solely dedicated to atheist versus religious art from different cultures and just show how all spiritual traditions of any merit produce far better art than any atheist ever. The best bragging point is probably Picasso. Oh, and maybe uh, uh, like Frida Kahlo and uh, uh, I forget who her husband was. It's, his name escapes me at any moment. It was rather beautiful, but also primitive and flawed in a lot of ways. We should do a stream on that because uh, atheist art sucks. It routinely sucks, whether they're libertarian, anarchist, or 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 some kind of actually no, uh, some some of the nationalists, but and but, but they get in more into occultism, so it's still kind of spiritual. Anyway, what, what's our next talking point? Where do we start? It's a uh, two fifty two thirty two to two fifty three fifty two. Two fifty two thirty two to fifty three fifty two. All right, we'll start a few seconds ahead of that, but let's go. Hey, JMD. Hey. Oh, Max, I did message you on Discord. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know. I apologize. Um, no. Well, you're here now, and we're going to do... Where am I stopping again, Engine? 253.52. Uh, this painting, uh, they, they went outside and looked at the east wind, and they yeah. saw that the east wind was actually... No atheist art is as pretty as that right there. Angels blowing... Max, video. Okay, so again, this guy doesn't understand the argument. It's not, I know, you know I acknowledge that they're still um, painting fantastical things, but the things that aren't fantastical, like the people, right? Do you, you notice a difference in the way the people are being depicted? Um, and in this case that's on the screen right now, it's, you know, I'm not a perfect example. Aphrodite there isn't, you know. Uh, as well proportioned as you know you would see in a lot of later artwork and modern artwork, but it's still head and shoulders above what was going on in the medieval period. Um, you're now you're noticing the fact that people were studying anatomy, right? You, that's clear. There's a clear shift in our knowledge of anatomy, at least amongst the artists. Like the artists of the medieval period, uh, they they clearly had issues with anatomy, right? But now we're starting oh. to look at the natural world. Oh, That's God. my point. We're starting we're to look at the natural smart. world. By natural world, I'm talking about things like anatomy. So, yeah, they, they, they do fantastical you things, liar! right? Like this, but <coughs> them were uh, the, the common denominator, and you can see the clear difference there. Anatomy, you oh, he's referring to the atheist lie, the mul the cultural Marxist lie that the church forbade people to dissect bodies. Total and complete BS. Uh, uh, well, well, he, well, a uh, lot of well, a lot of them did denying that. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead, Robert. Oh, um, sorry, it's kind of um. Anyway, um, basically, he's denying that you know there was any study of um anatomy in the medieval period, and that's outright false. I have an article here from Live Science, a pretty mainstream um, science publication. The article is titled, Grotesque Mu Mummy Head Reveals Advanced Medieval Science. And it talks about um, uh, human dissection in the Middle Ages. So no, um, they were concerned about human anatomy, <laughs> more so than the Romans. I'm done. In, in point of fact, history shows quite clearly that uh, non-Christians and many other and Christians were concerned for the longest time, is it proper to uh, desecrate somebody's body? And it was the Christians who were very science friendly, who reasoned out um, that because, the because, because people have a soul, and by the way, we have evidence even today that you have a soul. Go ahead and ask about it, because we have abundant evidence that you have a soul. We always have had evidence of a soul, and we still do. Um, and the, the, Zoroastrian, the Zoroastrians were cool with it. Well, the Christians reasoned that the soul had left the body. That's what, this is what the church people who were asked to come in and finally settle the question was no, the soul has left the body, and and we are allowed to play with anything that's material, which is why Christianity is was and is still the most science friendly religion. We're allowed to play with any material, you know. With you know, there may be some sacred objects, but basically nothing. Unlike unlike pagans or uh, many many other religions, there's no sacred animals, there's no sacred plants in Christianity. 
we're free to dissect and 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 analyze and do something. That's why science developed in the Christian West. Yeah, well, this this whole uh, art discussion to me seems to be kind of just uh, downwind of the whole of his whole uh, canard that religion is anti science. It, it's it seems to be kind of a subsidiary of that. Oh, God. I, again, this is all narrative, people. And by the way, if you've deprogrammed yourself from the SJW narrative and the feminist narrative, it's time to face facts and take your last real red pill. There's an atheist narrative, and you believe yes. this man is putting out nothing but fake history. And, and even if everything he says is true, which which nothing he says is true, that still does not give you a reason for believing God does not exist. It's like, okay, I have problems with religion, uh, therefore God does not exist. That is not an argument. Yeah, I, I, no kidding. Exactly. All right. Do we have more? Should we jump ahead? Dan B., did you want to add something? Well, yeah, concerning the soul, I'm actually starting a series on that, but it seems like the aesthetics and beauty would come from the soul because the mind is part of the soul. And on his view of, he, he's a naturalistic real, realist, it seems like. And it seems like on materialism, there is no mind or free will and aesthetics is not even possible. Right. Which is why most atheist art sucks. And if they get into realism, they'll eventually stop being atheists, even though there's arguments over whether realism is right or not. Uh, the idealists do have some strong arguments. But uh, in the final analysis, um, the atheist worldview falls. This particular atheist worldview falls apart. I'm telling you straight up, atheist art always sucks. Um, in the end, um, they occasionally produce something striking, um, but that's about it. Um, okay, what's our next jump point then? Two fifty-eight twenty-six. Is that right? Did uh, I lose everybody? I believe, yeah. All right, 258, 26. Hello? 258, 26 is where we're going. Uh, yeah, two, um, 258, 26 to 259, 25. I have to go to 16 because that's all it'll let me do, but I'll do it right now. And so I'm going all the way to 259, 25. All right, let's do it. For history classes. Because it, it, it's much more useful if you base your understanding of history on physical objects. And, you know, he's right about this. I took a lot of art history in college. And the thing that the, the reason he's saying study art history is the very thing that I'm doing in my video. I'm using artwork. I'm using the actual artifacts of these different eras to illustrate a point. And he, he totally disregards that. I, maybe it's because he he's you know prejudiced against atheists or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, he Lord. doesn't want to acknowledge like this. Like I'm literally doing the thing that complex. he's suggesting other people do. Like I'm using this as a rhetorical device in the very video that he's criticizing, and he's telling people, "Hey guys, do this. Listening to do this, this guy. thing. <laughs> Isn't dark matter an idiot? Isn't he an idiot? Oh, by the yeah. way, yep. <laughs> thing that dark matter absolutely." Doing. The, the, the level of self-awareness, the lack of self-awareness here is astounding. Look at the pot calling the kettle black. And, and, and you, sir, are far more than, 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 than an idiot. You're malevolent. Anti-theists anti like more self-awareness than any religious group out there. They do. They do. Uh, although, again, I would contend that Dark Matter 2525 knows every word coming out of his mouth is a, is a lie at this point. It's a money-making scheme, and it's a, a psychotic obsession for him. That's what I'm going to say. It's also desperation. He knows he has no career if, he, if he, once the atheist train is over. And by the way, the atheist train is just about to come come to its final halt. You will be here by the end of 2018. I, I really do. Um not making money at it anyway. Um, so, should we go to the last uh, segment, or is any, who who has something to say? JMD, do you have anything? Engine, do you have anything? Um, he. Go ahead. I'll, I'll just say the same thing concerning uh, stags and realism and so on. Yeah, well, I have my I have my other opinions on dark matter, but not they're not too relevant to the video. 
Uh, you know, uh, uh, Dark Matter 2525 pretty much poisons everything he touches, and so do his fans. That's the real reason you guys are unpopular, not because you don't believe what we believe. You're just so hatefully dishonest, shallow, uninformed, abusive, um, uh, bullying, uh, narcissistic, self-absorbed, uh, 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 condescending, arrogant, elitist, snots. I just, oh, my God. All right, 302, 12. Is the, oh, go ahead, Dinjin. Uh, judging by Dart Moron's artwork, he didn't learn shit himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to the last segment here. I want to be done with this trash tonight. We'll come back next week for a final kicking around, probably. We're going to go 302 12, roughly to 303 25. Mm -hmm. The perspective of the universe is, is Okay, so here we can see that he's actually demonstrably wrong about that. As, even about the two people that he used as examples, like Newton and Descartes. Of course, they were religious, but. Just because you are religious and contributed to theological thought, that doesn't that didn't mean you were safe from the church. Like Newton uh, kept secret his uh, the fact that he was uh, against the Trinity, and, and he kept it secret for good reason because his contemporaries were were burned at the stake for liar. for refuting the Trinity. Liar. And of course, uh, Descartes uh, uh, accepted heliocentrism in his book uh, The World, I believe it's called, um, which he did not publish because he feared the church. So no. in, the, in the very two people that he provided as examples, we can clearly see. Did he say Descartes? The church did yeah. threaten those people, even though yes. they were. Yes, he did. You see, that, this, is, this is the problem with this. read actions. meditations of philosophy. <laughs> you know, all this way or all that way. And, and that's just not the case. Christians also oppressed other Christians. I mean, what what the fuck does he think that the whole Reformation was about, for instance? Oh, because the Reformation was only a one-sided affair with good guys on one side and bad guys on the other. Oh my God, his history on the Reformation. I'm just being trying to be neutral and fair on the Reformation. Let's just let's let's get it clear. Um, the, the 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 Luther and his people were right to mm -hmm. identify corruption, and reform was desperately needed. The church has gone through that, and maybe going through it again at the moment. Um, um, but the argument with Luther went far better than that and involved a theological break. Also, it's an absolute lie to say that you could be burnt at the stake for denying the Trinity. That's a lie. Um, most of, much of what he said about Galileo there was a lie. Who want, Robert, you got anything to add on any of that? Because that was he, he, didn't say, he, didn't say much, he didn't say much about Galileo, did he? Well, I'm sorry, Dick. No. He, he, mentioned, um, he mentioned Rene Descartes, but um, the thing okay, about. But I mean, uh, he, the, the Galileo story is implicit in that. Um, sorry, go ahead. He was talking about other. Go ahead, Robert. What did you want to say? Oh, um, shoot. I always lose my train of thought. Um, Rene Descartes, um, about him. Hold on. Yeah, well, what was it? Wasn't helio heliocentrism a, a, a settled matter by by Descartes' time? That's the thing. Um, well, I don't know exactly a whole lot. I'm trying to look up like um. It was actually well. See, that's why he mentions uh, heliocentrism, and that was you know that was that was the Galileo claim to fame. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he mm -hmm. messed up and meant Galileo when he meant, said Descartes. Yeah, no, no, the, yeah, they, they, they are. It was new. Wait, 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 hold on. Did he mean? Did he mean? Uh, did he mean Kepler? No, actually, no. I think he really did mean Galileo because it was it was definitely Galileo who who was pushing for heliocentrism. Um, yeah. so that was what Descartes he was pushing for, huh? So was Descartes, and that's who he mentioned. However, what I'm trying to say um, is that um, this was at the time when. Um, heliocentrism wouldn't be um, provable. It wouldn't be provable until the 19th century. And, it, and the Catholic Church dropped all opposition to heliocentrism long before that. I believe it was in the um, 18th century was when the Catholic Church um, dropped all opposition. I bet it in fact, let me, let, me get, let me get this clear. Let me, I, I know a lot about this, and I will give references to anybody who asks for them and in good faith and will check them. Mm -hmm. Um, in reality, uh, heliocentrism started to get popular in, in the peer review scientific system that the church had established. The church established the peer review sciences system, by the way, in the first place. Uh, that's this is the era it started in. 
Um, we invented peer review. You're welcome. Um, Copernicus was a Catholic monk and he was distributing it, pro his heliocentrism theory privately, but he didn't want to do it publicly, not because he would be attacked by the church, actually because he lived the near, near the border where Protestants like Luther and them were. And the, the Protestants were mm -hmm. mocking the Pope at the time for even entertaining the idea because things were very hostile back then. I'm not saying the Protestants were stupid, but I mean, they ridiculed everything coming out of the Vatican. It was really bitter at that point. Um, and so he didn't want trouble with his Protestant friends. Um, and so that doesn't actually go to the church. You might say it goes to the religion, but the religion was what made their science possible in the first place. They were the only people doing science was the religious people um, because they came up with the whole thing. Anyway, and, and, and Galileo had demanded the church take a position. Uh, and, and, and the problem with Galileo, too, was he was wrong. There were several flaws in his model, and people like Kepler pointed them out. So did others. He, his theory was not only not provable, it was actually provably wrong on several, uh, on several levels, which is why, you know, the whole, the whole controversy is interesting, but uh, it had more to do with politics. Um, yeah. And it actually redounds to the church's favor. The Pope at the time was trying to distribute the theory and just get people to talk about it. But Galileo um, was proven wrong by his fellow scientists on the science. And that's what got him branded a heretic because he had wanted the church to dogmatically declare him correct. That's what he was asking for. Galileo was literally asking the church to please, you know, declare him correct. He, he wanted the Pope and the whole church to take a theological position on his side, which is where the debate began, which shouldn't have even happened um, uh, because the church shouldn't have taken the side and the Pope didn't really want to. Mm. It got crazier from there. It's an interesting story, but nobody was that afraid of heliocentrism. Kepler was a helio heliocentrist, but he believed the... Uh, the orbits went in, a, in in more of an oval than a circle, which and and he was right. One, uh, you yeah. know, Newton's model uh, assumed perfect circles. Yeah, but Kepler was forced to proclaim astrology, which which was false, as opposed to the um, to what he knew. I, I wait a minute. Who's a he was forced to do what? Proclaim what he knew was false for oh, for the for, well, for the church. He was a Protestant. That's interesting. Um, I'd have to go into, well, what is that story? I, I don't know as much about the Kepler story. I'd like to hear more about that sometime. But by the way, I, I think we should stress again that, that geocentrism uh, does not have its origins in, in the Bible. It, it, came, it did not come from Christianity. It came from pagan ancient Greece. And, and um, the and astronomers of, 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 of Copernicus's and, and Galileo's time believed it was based on good evidence. It was not a faith position. They believed it was based on good evidence. <clears throat> yeah. In fact, take away the fact that you read that the, the earth is round in your school books and you've been told your whole life that the earth is round. How do you know it's round, mm -hmm. Mr. Smart Guy Atheist? An intelligent person who didn't have access to all this stuff would be naturally, it would be natural to make that assumption. I mean, if he was curious enough, he'd start to see things that challenged it, but then it becomes a debate question. And as Robert said, that, you know, I mean, we had evidence, really strong evidence going back to before Christ. Um, but it, um, I, I also, I also, uh, do we, is, is there any evidence that that uh, heretics were burned in uh, 17th century England? Was this oh, something that happened? They they like to trot out the story of Giordano Bruno, which they do completely dishonestly. If they knew the the real story of Giordano Bruno, well, he's he's he'll get to that later. Oh, okay. Is so we going to get to the lies about Giordano Bruno? That what, what about England? No. That, that's that's what I'm, I'm I'm wondering about because they always say, "Oh, well, if if Newton didn't profess his true atheism, he would have been burnt at the stake." He I'm was like, an extremely <laughs> devout Catholic. <laughs> it was. It wasn't. He thought atheists were fucking morons. Yeah. yeah. I mean, literally, if you're in Dark Matter 25, 25's audience, you are literally being miseducated. You are being lied to about history by this man. This is not a matter of opinion. He's lying. He's making shit up. Actually, he's getting it out of old communist propaganda books. You, you know, I, I really can't tell at this point if he's 
if he's genuinely this clueless or if he no. really is lying based on that malevolent smirk on his face. No, he really is. <laughs> I, I, I'm standing with he, he. He should be presumed malevolent until he proves otherwise. Because you know, the bizarre, he's the, the, again, 10, 15, some guy, how many years has he been doing this for a living? He said it was, he's been doing this 20 years before Rational Wiki got up. Yeah, okay, that's pathetic. You're vile, sir. You make your living peddling obviously easily disprovable lies that your fellow atheists can tell are lies, that, 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 that people of all religions can tell are lies. You, you, you're, you're just hideous hate propagandist. Uh, and, Berserker, uh, some guy in the comments, uh, Berserker, says, uh, you know, I keep looking at this dark matter guy's face. Uh, he looks like a pedophile or a serial killer or both. That's a, you know that may be that may be going a little too far. I mean, I I don't want to just put that on the guy. You know, um, I, I don't know. Maybe that, that that's going a little too far for me. But I don't know. I mean, it is true. You look at the people in the atheist community, and they are constantly getting into sex scandals, and they are Lord constantly Christ. getting drunk and getting into fights with each other. That's a long term pattern going back more than ten years too. I mean, atheists always turn on each other. Mm. They always wind up hating each other. It's it's just ridiculous. Um, okay, so did we just was that the last segment? That was the last one. That's good because I've had enough of this. Yeah, and we didn't do too bad on this one. Uh, we're going to come back next week and in a final round of this. I hope. Maybe final round. Maybe final round. Maybe one more after that. One of us is to show that you can puncture these guys if you have the, the, the if the, you have the. Uh, you know, if you start seeing through them, guys, you can puncture them. And that should be said of Dark Matter 2525's fans. No, really, at some point, you're going to run into somebody who's smarter than you, and they're going to back you into a wall, and they're going to do what I'm doing to you here. And you're going to play victim, but you, really, he is easily debunked. Get skeptical of him and start making him back up his claims. And don't just go to the atheist forums to get your responses. Seek knowledgeable sources on the other side. If you do not seek knowledgeable sources on the other side, you are a liar when you call yourself a skeptic. You are a gullible cult member who doesn't yeah. know what real skepticism is. Anybody else have any final thoughts? Oh, yeah. Where, where did JMT go? I don't know. I'm still here. Hey. Oh, yeah. Uh, you said you wanted to voice your opinion on Dark Moron. Um, well, when when he brings up, you know, how if you didn't confess. Um, non um, the the Catholic Church's view on, you know, the earth and whatnot. Uh, Victor Stinger, I think, brought up the same point that me and Rob responded to his article in Huffington Post. Um, you know, how a debate a Christian apologist and he used the same point and. And I, yeah, I think that, burnt, burnt at the stake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The burnt at the stake thing, just so you know, um, um, not a real common uh, practice, really, ever. <laughs> um, uh, 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 even at the height of the Inquisition, they were were killing, like executing the equivalent number of people as the state of Texas kills every year right now. Um, not a real high number. You, uh, with rare exception, you had to be a member of the church and had to be found guilty as a as as like a hierarchical member of the church. Somebody in the employ of the church, a priest, a bishop, a monk. Uh, so somebody's you know making his living off of being a church person and being corrupt or lying. And some of them were actually literally corrupt, and some were insane. Um, some were not. Yeah, guilty but the, 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 the number the numbers of the Inquisition were exaggerated, but that doesn't sure. mean they didn't torture and burn people. No, that's true. And it's also cases the secular system at the time also would uh, torture people to death. Um, and in fact, most of the executions were carried out that way on the order of the crown, not in the church. The phrase was surrender to the secular arm because burning at the stake was a way of killing people for other crimes as well. Um, it wasn't just it wasn't even done by the church. The church would admit that this person had violated the law and turn them over to the secular state, which would do the dirty deed. Um, that doesn't make it okay, but it was accepted by the standards of the time that this was an appropriate way to kill, to execute certain criminals. Um, um, and it might have been heresy or it could have been something else. Um, it was eventually gotten rid of because Christians said it was wrong. I still want to hear atheists tell me why it's wrong. Didn't Napoleon put an end to it? Huh? Didn't Napoleon put an end to it? 
Uh, we'd have to go and look into it, but it's, it's well. No, <laughs> they had the guillotine, so I guess that was an improvement. Oh yeah, they came up with the guillotine as a more humane way of doing executions. Yeah. Yes. Oh guillotine. wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, I think Louis came up with the um guillotine. Oh, uh, it was in that era. Though. It was in that era. Yeah. Um, and it was. It was, it was actually the um the French revolutionaries themselves. It wasn't King Louis or Napoleon. It was the um like the Jacobins and the Hubertes C's and all them, um, like Robespierre yeah. and, and all them. But here's, um, here's, here's the, the, go ahead. I, here's the thing. I would rather take my chance in um, inquisitorial um, Spain than in revolutionary France. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because yes. Um, Big time. Because of that, you just don't, don't the, be part of the church hierarchy and you're safe in inquisitorial Spain, amongst other things. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, don't be a Muslim who's pretending to be a priest. Don't be a, a rabbi who's pretending to be a, you know, a church functionary. Uh, that's what they were looking for. And some of the people were guilty. Um, and I, 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 I actually, this is a provocative question, but a serious one. Mr. Atheist, can you tell me why I should not uh, advocate burning you at the stake? Is there a reason I should not do that? I know I would not do that because. My he's going to take, take you out of, he's going to take you out of context there. Uh, let him do it. My Christian values won't let me uh, uh, advocate something like that because I can tell it challenges my Christian values. I want to know on your values by what objective standards you declare it wrong because we got atheist regimes doing things as bad or ten times worse all over the planet, and, and none of you seems to be saying a word about that. Yeah, I wonder what he. I wonder what he'd be doing during the reign of terror. He would have been helping kill, burn churches and rape and pillage, I think, which is what no, he'd be like. Did. You'd be like Marquis de Sade um, um, after the French Revolutionary government um, confiscates the churches. He would be having orgies in them. <laughs> no, he's not, he's not nearly interesting enough to be a Marquis de Sade. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anybody, 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 anybody else got any final thoughts? Because I want to wrap this up. Anybody else? Yeah. I have I'll, um, one final. Oh, go ahead, go ahead Robert. whoever. Go ahead, Robert. No, you go, Robert. Then okay. Then um, here's my final thought. This is. This is a quote from a historian of science, Ronald Numbers, and um, you know he's really qualified more so than this bald fuckhead. And the um, quotation is, "quote No scientist, to my knowledge, or to the knowledge of friends of mine who work in the who work on the history of the scientific revolution, has ever lost his life because of his scientific views." Mm. End quote. Who said that? Ronald Numbers, historian of science. Um, referring yeah. to the um, church and um, science in the Middle Ages. Yeah. Yes, athe atheists, please give us the name. We know of hundreds of thousands of Christians who are executed by secular governments for the crime of being uh, for the crime of being Christian. Please give us the name of one atheist who was ever executed uh, for the crime of being atheist uh, by a Christian. Yeah. Oh, I I think he'd love it. I he love it in China. Yeah, I, I tell you, and 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 by the way, I can name numerous examples of atheist regimes uh, getting in the way of science and punishing and killing people for their scientific views. Yes. We have lots of examples of that. We don't have examples of Christians doing that, uh, really. Uh, uh, very awesome. very few. I mean, there's lots of them. Lam uh, we can go into Lamarckianism and a whole, or or is it Lysenkoism? I can't. Lysenkoism was was the state policy of yeah. <laughs> yeah, of, and of, other things that are state policy now. That if you if you if you if you doubt them or are skeptical of them, you become dub dubbed science denier. It's, yes. it's a very creepy cultish mentality. Um, which again, also, if someone says science denier, it's like. No, this really is your your religion, isn't it? If someone told you this was science, and you will not ever tolerate anybody questioning it. All right. Anyway, final thoughts, engine. Uh, it's not much more to say at this point. I'm sorry if we ramble too much. Okay, deflating. Anything final? Uh, yeah, I just also want to say that the uh, Soviet Union suppressed the Big Bang Theory because they thought it made too great a, a concession to a uh, yes. creation. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, if somebody says uh, uh, religion inhibits the progress of science because of, of, of creationism or whatnot, you could just throw that in their face. Otherwise, yeah. uh, I'm good. Yeah, they... All right, huh? Oh, I was just going to say that they... Um, I did a presentation on the Kalam, and they 
it was some Russian scientist. I don't have it on top of my head, but he was the uh, founder or the original guy who came up with the oscillating theory. So, of yeah, the, he was the yeah. cosmological Lys- Lysenko, basically. Yeah. 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 And the steady state theory was pushed dogmatically. And now, by the way, the Big Bang theory is uh, pushed dogmatically. And people who challenge the Big Bang theory are mocked. Now, I don't disbelieve the Big Bang theory. I'll repeat, a Catholic priest came up with it based on his religious views, by the way. His religious views very much helped him formulate that theory. Um, uh, But uh now people if they challenge it the atheists act like you should be mocked for challenging it but there is reason to challenge it and there are people who have challenges to it science should allow the challenges um but anyway and that's why i like to say atheists poison everything especially science oh Um, yeah the um as stalin famously said religion is the antithesis of science that is exactly their sentiments and they are they are and it's and again they always project because in fact atheists poison science whenever they touch it just and like when they, they poison human relationships but just like they poison history just like they poison society wherever they go with their smug arrogant uh, hateful ignorance their hateful condescending superior narcissistic illiterate science and when they t- and history illiterate and when they, asses huh. And when they tell you that they didn't kill in the name of atheism, they're lying. They're because lying. Le- because as because Lenin said, I quote, atheism is the natural and inseparable part of communism, unquote. Yes. yes, and you would have gotten that out of Mao and quite of the other butchers. No, I'm not willing to trust atheists with political power until they admit that there's this problem in their ranks. And if all they got to do is say, I didn't do it, I wouldn't do that, I don't believe you. You either would do it or you would stand silent while it was happening, just like you stand silent now when Christians are abused and have been for years online. And no, that's but not they J.W. whining, it's a fact. All right, everybody. They don't, have any pol- they don't have any political power, that's why. They lie and say they, they have no political power, too. It's ridiculous. All right, everybody, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. We should be here tomorrow with... Uh, with uh, John C. Wright, we've got um, alternative, uh, we've got a UFO uh, guy we'll be interviewing in the next few days, trying that one again. Uh, we're here every night, so please tell your friends or enemies. Visit us on redpillreligion.com and God bless.